Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today I am coming with another free pattern sew along. Today we're going to be sewing up the Birch Unisex Top by Samantha Marie Designs. This pattern is for beginner level and it is super easy to sew. I have not made this pattern yet, but look at the, the instructions. I think it's going to be a quick one. Um, it's like a crew neck tee and you can do short sleeve or long sleeve. Today we're going to be working with the long sleeve version. The fact that it's unisex, it means it can be made for the whole family. This pattern includes a print at home file, an AO file, and a projector file. Today I'm going to be printing it on my home printer and I'm kind of going to show you um, how to do that real quick. This pattern is designed for knit fabrics and it ranges from size 0 to 22 so it's got a good range. So let me show you the first steps which is to actually print the pattern and let's get started. Wait, before we get started, I wanted to tell you today I am wearing the free v-neck top from Lolan Kids. This pattern is super cool and I do have a sewing tutorial video here on this channel uh, for this v-neck top. On the sewing tutorial, I did a short sleeve version, but as you can see, this pattern also comes with a long sleeve version. It's a little bit of an oversized tee with a beautiful, easy to sew v-neck, so make sure you check that out. And also make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of the free tutorials that I post on here and some other content that's coming um, so yeah like share and subscribe and comment all right friends here we are I am at Samantha Marie design web page and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the right hand side over here on the top there is a hourglass that I'm gonna click on and I'm going to type in birch um, I just typed it in. I had already typed it in, so that's why I went ahead and came up. And the Birch Unisex T right here, a free sewing pattern comes up. I'm going to click on that, and here is the actual pattern. Next step, I'm going to add to cart or buy it now. If you've got other things that you're buying from the website, uh, you're going to just add to cart and then go back and, and um, purchase the other things you're going to purchase. Listen, here's going to give you all the information on this pattern. It even gives you some pictures of the different options of this pattern. I am going to go with the long sleeve option here. Um, it also has a cuff option, so I think I'm going to use uh, the cuffs. So then I'm going to go right here where it says buy now. And on this page, you're going to enter your information. Um, if you don't have an account, you have to make an account, enter all that information on here. But if you already have an account, you're just going to log in. Once you do that, you're going to head and continue to payment and that will take you to the next screen. All right, so this is the next screen. And once you come here, it should tell you that your pattern, your order is free, so no payment is required. And then you can go ahead and complete your order. Once you get to this next page, you're going to go to the little bar right here that says access downloads. I'm gonna click right on it. And here is your download. Now we're going to access now and here's the little download button. We're going to click on that and you have all the different options to download. Here's your instructions, which I will download. And here's the different options for your patterns. AO file is actually a big uh, piece of paper that prints the pattern all together. So you can send it to a printing shop or if you have an AO printer, uh, a zero printer, you can use that. Then the next option is the print pattern, which is what I'm going to do as I'm going to print it at home. It's a PDF file. Um, and then the last one is a projector file. So if you have a projector that you can project to your sewing table or your cutting table, then you can use this option. So first I'm going to download the instructions. So hit that download button on the instructions. And I'm also, I'm going to go ahead and allow that. And it comes up here to the top. It opens right away to my, I have Adobe Acrobat Reader on here. I'm going to go back to that website and now I'm going to download my actual pattern. So hit download, especially if you're printing from home, this is how you're going to download it. And it comes here on your Acrobat Reader is where I am. Um, it's a free version of Acrobat um, Reader and it has what I love is it has this right here on the left hand side. I'm pointing at it, it's the layers uh, feature. I'm going to click on that and you can actually get rid of the sizes that are not your size. Before we can get to that step, we need to go back to our instructions here, um, scroll down 
to our size chart right here and figure out where you fit into this size chart. Make sure that you do this first. Do not go by your measurements for ready to wear because pattern companies can have a little bit of variation on their measurements. So make sure to get a perfect fit, you go by the measurements that you fall into. I fall between the category of eight or 10. I'm gonna go with that eight because this is a looser fitting. And then from then, if I think it's a little too tight, this is gonna be my sample one, then I'll go up. Um, so we've got, cause my eight is, I fall into eight for my uh, bust. Um, and since that's gonna be the tightest part of the shirt, um, I actually think I'm gonna do the eight. All right, so now it's time to print. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect out of my um, layers menu. I'm gonna take off all the other sizes that I do not fit into. We're printing size eight. You see how they start disappearing when you, uh, when you click them off? Okay, so now as you can see right here, um, all of those have disappeared because of the fact that it's just gonna print my size okay so now what i'm going to do is the first thing i want to do is i want to print this page one and even if there's no pattern piece here i want to print it because as you can see here there is a chart uh, that shows you um the measurement you want to make sure that it's going to fit. So once I print that, I'm going to measure this inch out or this five centimeters uh, and make sure that they are they print it correctly. So I'm going to print just page one first um, and make the, make sure of this. And then once that's sure, I'll print everything else that I need to print. I like to go through the pattern and figure out what pages I need to print. Like looks like size like page four. I don't have to print uh, page five, page six, page seven. If there's pattern on it. See how there's pattern markings on it? That means I have to print it. But if there's nothing on it, I'm gonna look at the picture. Okay, 16, there's nothing on it. And in the picture, the preview, it looks like it's just like part of it for bigger sizes. So that means I don't have to print page 16. 18, it looks like I don't have to print it. I do have to print it. Um, so I just like to go through so I can save on some paper. And then what I'm going to do is, whoops, sorry about that. I'm going to hit the print button here. And usually you just have to print it at a regular scale, actual size, 100%. I'm gonna print pages, I'm gonna print the first page. And honestly, I always print in black and white because it saves me on ink. I don't have to pay for all the colors. Uh, it's cheaper and since I only print my size, I don't need to know all the different colors. The reason why um, color printing is good for when you're printing all the sizes is because if you look right here, usually pattern makers have the different sizes have a different color um, so you can differentiate by that it makes it a lot easier on eyes than for it all to be black but I'm only printing one so that's fine so I'm gonna go ahead and print that and then we'll pick up from there all right here's my page one printed off um, black and white I want to use now it's time to measure that inch and I want to use a, uh, a hard ruler you don't want to use a measuring tape sometimes sometimes they stretch out and it's hard to tell if they're correct so I'm using my hard ruler, as you can see right here, I'm placing it and it fits right in. See that square inch? It's right, oops, it keeps moving, but it is perfectly fit, which means that this is a perfect size. I'm gonna continue to print all of them and then we're going to go ahead and put it together. All right, now that my pattern has printed, it's time to put it together. And this looks like a pretty straightforward pattern, which is a overlap pattern. As you can see right here, I love to use a washable glue or you can use tape as well. I just find that the glue is easier. So all I do is I put a little bit of the purple glue here at the edge where it has the little dotted lines. I grab the next page and I align it up. You see how the little circles line up? Um, it's kind of hard to see. I'll have to bring it closer to you. Um, it is overlapping. So the lines, the dotted lines overlap and the circle, if you can see it, actually makes a circle through the paper. So now you can cut the one side if you want to or you can just go ahead and overlap, which is what I'm doing here and just continue overlapping all the way. I, I did print page four when I said I wasn't going to. Oh man. Anyway, so, and I'm just gonna continue to glue that all, all the way. 
um, and put it all together. I ran out of glue, but thankfully, I always have an extra. I just threw that glue back there to the trash can and it totally missed and it made a mess everywhere. All right, our next step is to cut our pattern out. All done, next up, we're going to go ahead and cut up our fabric. All right, friends, it's time to cut our fabric and I'm using this beautiful cable knit from August Closet because I'm going to make this more of a sweater, um, sweater weather uh, type of thing. I'm using the long sleeve, I'm probably going to do the cuffs and I think this fabric will be gorgeous for it. It's got great stretch and it's very lightweight, so I think it's going to be great. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut. One of the things that you have to keep in mind when we are cutting our fabric is to follow the guidelines on the pattern. So this one is cut on the fold. That means we fold our fabric in half and where that fold is, that's where we place that. And then we see right here that it tells you where the stretch is supposed to be going sideways. Um, it's where you're, if you grab your fabric and you stretch it out, it's the biggest stretch and the grain lines go in the opposite direction. I'm going to be using my handy electric scissors because they're just super easy to cut. So that's what I'm going to use to cut the whole pattern. I think everything is cut on the fold except for the sleeve cuff. It's just cut by itself. It doesn't say on the fold. It just says cut two, which means I'm going to cut all the way around and cut two of this one. I didn't mention this, but one thing to note is that this pattern already includes the seam allowance. Some patterns do not include seam allowance, so you have to add that as you're cutting. But this pattern already includes it, which means that we have to just cut around the pattern and we don't have to worry about seam allowance. Now another thing here, it says solid line hemmed line and dotted line cuff line. So we're going to cut right at the dotted line here because I am going to be adding the cuffs. This is my mark, my... Uh, overlap mark on my sleeve so the actual dotted line is the one that will follow the color guide from your size chart. One thing I like to do is I like to when I get to the center just kind of notch it up so I know that that's the center of my sleeve for when I go to attach it to my bodice. You don't have to do that I just like it to do it. Now for the fun time let's sew it up. I've got my front, back, neck band, neck arm bands, and sleeves. We're gonna start by sewing the shoulders right sides together here at the top. I also wanna grab my neck band and prep it. Depending on your fabric, you may want to fold it wrong sides together and do a memory crease here by steaming it with your iron. And after you do that, then you're gonna grab the short raw edges and sew them together. Since this pattern is a knit pattern, which is a stretch fabric, you will need to use either a serger or you can use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine as well. While we're talking about that, let me show you on my machine some kind of different stitches. This one right here is called a triple stitch. That is a great stitch. That looks like a straight stitch, ends up looking like a straight stitch, but it's a stretch stitch. This one is a lightning bolt stitch, which would be great also for um, knit fabrics and the good old zigzag stitch. Also a good one for sewing with uh, knit fabrics. I usually, if I'm going to be sewing with my, serger, with my sewing machine, I'm sorry, I like to use a zigzag stitch. Or I also use a straight stitch with a stretch thread like Eloflex. 
All right, next is attaching our sleeves. So we're gonna open up our uh, arm side, which is right here where the shoulder seam is. My neckline is in here. Here's my arms. I'm gonna grab my sleeve, one of my sleeves, and now where I made that little mark in the center, that's where it comes in handy. If you didn't make a mark, you can fold it and mark it. And that is what's going to go right where that shoulder seam is of your top and we're matching them right sides together and then we're going to go all the way down to one side and then we'll go over to the other side and come all the way down to the other side and we're going to repeat that same thing with the other sleeve now you could go ahead and sew that but because i have clips and this is easy to do with clips. I'm going to go ahead and prep my neckband. Here is where my opening is, and we're going to first mark our neckline by grabbing our shoulder seams and matching them together and going to the back. Usually I'd like to do like a little snip with my scissors, but this fabric has that ragged edge, and you won't be able to see it anyway, so I'm just using clips. So there's my front and back, and then I'm going to match the front and back and go to the sides. We do not use your shoulder seams as your sides because your front and back are not the same height. Usually your front's a little lower. So if you use your shoulders as your guide, you will end up with a uh, not a very good looking neckband. Now we grab our actual neckband and we turn it wrong sides together. If you created a fold, if you um, steamed it earlier and had a fold line, this would help at this, it would help at this point. Um, then after we fold it right sides together, we go from the back to the front and mark that. And then you match the back and the front and go to each side. And now we just march, I'm sorry, we just match uh, with the quarter points that you put on your top. But make sure that you figure out where the front and the back are. The back is higher because then the back is where you wanna put that seam that you created when you sewed the neckband together. Make sure that your neckband doesn't get twisted in the process. All right, now we're gonna go sew that on. My serger likes to move. I need to get um, a solid thing to put underneath it so it doesn't move. But for now, I just have to put it back in its place every few minutes. Make sure your raw edges are together so they're kept. And I keep starting the serger before I'm done with my sentence. So they're catching while you're sewing. Now the neckband, a lot of people are scared of doing neckbands, but they really are not too difficult. Um, you need to make sure that you keep those quarter points. And then I like to use my, do my neck, uh, my band facing up so I know how much to stretch it because you're gonna stretch your neckband to fit onto your neck. All right, get to that first quarter point and I remove that pin and I do the same to the next quarter point. Next on the line is sewing my side seams and we're almost finished. Now let me tell you this, if your neckband or your seams look a little wavy, all you need to do is go to your iron and steam it and it will bring those waves down because the fabric has stretched as you're sewing it. So when you steam it, it brings it right back in and it gives you a really nice little line. So I'm going to set my fabric down, my pattern uh, right sides together at that side, match up the armpit area, and go all the way down the bodice, and then all the way down the sleeve. And then we do the same thing for the other side. All right, so we'll sew those sides and we'll also prep our cuffs so that we're ready to sew them when we're done sewing the sides by grabbing them and folding them right sides together and sewing that short raw edge, kind of like we did our neckband. All right, two more steps, which are to add the cuff and to um, hem the bottom. So we're gonna grab our cuff, we're gonna fold it wrong sides together and match up those raw edges. Instead of having four points, you only have two, so you're gonna just half it. 
so half of it and then we're going to do the same with our arm uh, or sleeve there's the half so this is the wrong side it's wrong side out that's the right side so we're going to stick our cuff inside of it right sides together and match those seams match the seams and then match the halves and then I'm gonna go sew it on like that all right I am also going to go ahead and prep my hem and I'm just gonna fold up and use my iron that is not on let it heat up and then just um, top stitch you can do that on your cover stitch or your sewing machine with a straight sti a stretch stitch or however you want to do your uh, hem I am going to be using a cover stitch so that's what you'll see it looks like a serger but it is a little bit different and is used for hemming all right while I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and give my neckline a steam do you see how that waviness has gone away that's looking really good all right friends we are finished I am super pleased with how this turned out it is the perfect simple easy and quick sweater um, I just love it. I do like to tuck in my sweaters a lot. I don't know why, but even if I didn't, it is a great length. It's right at hip. Um, the length on the sleeves are perfect. It's a great neckline. Um, there are so many hacks that I can already think of doing with this pattern, uh, changing the sleeve color, color blocking it, uh, doing a bunch of other things to it, changing the sleeve. Uh, there's a bunch of things that we can do and I can show you another time. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I just wanted to give you a little insight on how easy it is to sew your own clothing. Go grab this free pattern and sew it up with me. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a like, thumbs up, um, and comment and let me know you enjoyed it. And then subscribe so you never miss any of my tutorials on how to sew these easy free patterns. I hope you have a, a great rest of your day, get to sewing, and come back and see me next time. Bye! Oh, I always forget, if you would like to, come follow me on my Instagram account where I share a lot of behind the scene sewing and just everyday life nonsense. And also, this fabric happens to be from Olga's Closet, which is one of my favorite fabric suppliers online. And I am going to attach all that information on the information box below. So check that out.